Hello everyone and I have one more pretty interactive chess endgame study uh, by this time Adolf J. Fink and he was an American chess endgame expert and chess problem composer and also chess player and in this picture you can see Adolf J. Fink in the right next to the legend one of the greatest Jose Raul Capablanca and the story of this picture is also interesting he set, uh, set up the board uh, with one of his compositions and showed to Capablanca and let him solve one of his compositions. Interesting, isn't it? You can see the expression in his face. He looks a little bit nervous or he looks as concentrated as Capablanca. Uh, he was like, is Capablanca the legend, the greatest, is going to like one of my studies or he is like, is Capablanca going to be able to solve the puzzle or, li or like it? So interesting, isn't it? So you can see Capablanca is deep in thought and trying to solve his composition. And I also like this picture because this is a pretty rare picture of the of one of the greatest, Jose Raul Capablanca. So I, dig uh, I am digging deep in the history of chess. This is why I stumble on some pictures like this. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, this is the pretty rare picture of Capablanca and we see Adolf J. Fink once again on the right. Okay, so this is I think a pretty basic and a pretty interactive chess endgame study. In this position we can see that materially speaking black is actually better. Uh, and in this position actually uh, it looks like this two connected pass pawns uh, is looking menacing and defending doesn't look very easy. So in this position, how would you defend? How would you continue in this position? How should white play? Uh, if you had the white pieces, what would you do? Uh, okay, I'm showing the first move. First move, actually, okay, in this uh, endgame study, we are not going to win this chess game, unfortunately. But we are going to take a very valuable and, a, and an important draw. Uh, actually, getting to draw after this position is... Uh, is actually a success for white so the first move is pushing the g pawn and eventually there is not going to be any legal moves for white so this is what we are trying to do did you see g6 uh, and obviously in this position we are threatening to take the pawn and then promoting the queen so black has to take what else and now can you see the next move for white did you see the best move? <laughs> Actually, this is a little bit tricky. I think if capturing the pawn, the pawns are rolling. And it's not that easy. And if you take the pawn, black is going to take back. And it is going to give uh, the white king some breathing space. And we don't want this actually. We want stalemate. The move is bishop to b7. This is check. And black takes the bishop. If not capturing the bishop, actually this is going to be losing because of capturing the bishop. And then bishop to f5. And now what? If capturing the bishop, the pawn is going full steam ahead. So pushing the pawn, bishop to c2, b3, bishop to d1, king to a5, and then h4, king to b4, h5. a3, bishop takes on b3. And then pushing the pawn and actually white is doing very well. If you check the king, we can hide the king. And we have all kinds of checks. And actually it is okay for white. So first move is g6 and then bishop to b7. King takes on b7. And if bishop takes, we are going to have a similar scenario. Uh, and then can you see the move? Did you see the idea? The move is g5, b4, and now what would you do? King to h3, b3, king to h4, of course. And pushing the pawn or something else. And then I think you see the move. h3. And whatever black does, white actually has no legal moves. Unbelievable. What a beautiful chess problem composition by Adolf J. Fink and
Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more interactive chess puzzles and chess endgame studies. Take care, stay safe and bye bye.